equations of motion in this video we will have a look at the derivation of equations of motion for a particle moving with constant acceleration before moving on to the derivation part we shall first revise motion along a straight line consider the x axis we have the origin over here any particle that moves along the right side consider it as motion along positive x axis and along left side we consider it as along negative x axis so for any particle moving along x axis through this path now here the initial position is at origin final position is at 5 so the position will be x equals to 5 but the distance will not be 5 the distance will be total path covered so first plus 8 then again 3 from there so that will be equals to 11 meters but the displacement will just be the distance between initial and final position that will be equal to 5 similarly if you have the motion along negative x direction then again x will be minus 5 but distance will still be 11 meters the distance you will not associate with the negative value and displacement will be minus 5 meter that is x equals to minus 5 here minus sign indicates the direction is along negative x axis now the derivation part for motion with constant acceleration we define acceleration as rate of change of velocity so mathematically we denote it as dv by dt or d dt of v let us separate the variables integrating on both sides now when we integrate on left side the velocity will vary from initial velocity u to final velocity v in the time duration 0 to t so on the left side the integration will be v on the right side since acceleration is constant it comes out of the integration sign so integration of dt is t it goes from 0 to t now we apply the upper limits and lower limits on the respective sides so on the left side we get upper limit v minus u will be equals to a into t minus 0 therefore v minus u equals to at or v equals to u plus at this is the first equation of motion to derive the second equation of motion we start with the first equation of motion v equals to u plus at now by definition of v velocity we can write it is the rate of change of position so that will be dx by dt right side as it is again separating the variables dx on the left side u plus at with respect to dt on the right side integrating on both sides on the left side the position changed from 0 to x in the time duration 0 to t integration of dx will be x on the right side since there is a plus sign we can apply integration individually to both the terms so integration from 0 to t of u dt plus a integration 0 to t of t dt a is constant also u is a constant so x will be equals to u integration of t plus a integration of t dt is t square by 2 applying the limits we get x equals to ut plus half at square this is the second equation of motion for the third equation of motion we start again with first equation of motion then squaring on both sides and simplifying so v square on the left side as it is on the right side u plus at the whole square is of the type a plus b the whole square so that will be u square plus 2 u at plus a square t square simplifying this further here we take out 2a common so in the bracket we will have ut plus half at square now from second equation of motion ut plus half at square is nothing but position x therefore 
final expression will be v square equals to u square plus 2 a x. This is your third equation of motion. For motion in a straight line with constant acceleration, we derived the three expressions v equals to u plus a t, x equals to u t plus half a t square and v square equals to u square plus 2 a x. These equations are very important and are widely used in solving numericals or deriving expressions for motion of particle in two dimensions and three dimensions. So practice as many as questions as you can to memorize this equation and to understand their application completely.